Now let's look at the pharynx, which is around this area over here. And what's unique about the pharynx is that, as well as, actually let's recap from what we learned before. The pharynx looks at these three portions over here. It has three parts. It has a part next to the nose, which is the nasal pharynx. It has a part next to the oral cavity or the mouth, which is the oral pharynx. And then it has a part next to the vocal cords, the larynx, which is known as the laryngeal pharynx. Now, when we're looking at the muscles in the pharynx, it's actually pretty simple um, and easy to remember. There's three, there's constrictors. So we have muscles that are known as constrictors. And constrictors, what they do is um, they squeeze, okay? So they squeeze a muscle. That's what constrictors do. They squeeze it. So we have a superior constrictor muscle. Superior means above. We have a middle constrictor muscle, which means it's in the middle. And then we have the inferior constrictor muscle, which means inferior means below, right? So we have one on top, which is known as superior, middle, and inferior constrictor uh, pharyngeal muscles, right? which is pretty self-explanatory because superior means top, middle, because this is muscle is in the middle, and inferior because this muscle is at the bottom. Now, what they do is when you're swallowing, okay, so when you're eating food, what happens is the food is kind of going down the pharynx, and as it's going down, the food kind of um, goes over here into the near the area where the superior constrictor muscles are, and what this muscle does is it squeezes it, and when it squeezes it, it'll go down to the middle constrictor muscle, and then the food gets squeezed again, and then it goes down to the inferior constrictor muscle where the squeeze, where the food rather squeezes again. By, with this muscle. So the food gets squeezed with this with these muscles and then it goes down into the esophagus and that's kind of essentially how we swallow. So just know the names of the three constrictor muscles, superior, middle, and inferior. Okay, that's how so it squeezes here. So as you're swallowing some food, this muscle gets squeezed in. Okay, so it squeezes in and then the food goes down to the middle and then it squeezes in over here and then the food goes down to the inferior constrictor muscle and then this muscle squeezes it and then the food goes down into the esophagus. Okay, another um, muscle to look at is something called the stylopharyngeus muscle. So stylo, let's look at where this comes from. Just You may remember the word styloid process. And styloid process is this right over here. So it's like a stiletto heel, something sticking out of the bone. So there's a muscle that attaches to the styloid process, and then it goes into the pharynx because it ends with pharyngeals. So into the pharynx. And this muscle, what it does is it dilates or opens up the pharynx. So as you're swallowing food, this area over here needs to open up. So it will open up the area so that the food can go down. Okay, so it dilates and elevates the pharynx. So just no dilate means to open. Then we have the salpingopharyngeal muscle. And I know it's a really funny name, um, but salpingopharyngeal muscle, it actually, so salpingo, it actually comes from the, um, like near the ear, the auditory tube. Okay, and then it attaches it to the pharynx, somewhere in the pharynx. And what it does, is it helps with the swallowing process. So it's a muscle that's used to allow the food to go down uh, into the esophagus. So when we're speaking, and, and think about it, whenever you're speaking, there are many times where um, the soft palate kind of goes up and back, okay? And we may not notice this, but the soft palate does go up and back when we're speaking. And how does it go up and back? Well, the levator velli palatini and the muscles of the uvula help do this. So remember, le levator is means elevate, right? So it basically takes this. Um, it's a muscle that kind of is kind of going like this, and what it does is it lifts up the soft palate. So it lifts up the soft palate so that we're able to talk. And here is our voice box. Okay, so we're able to talk. If um, our muscles don't work properly then our speech will have a nasal sound, okay? So our muscles need to um, be able to um, work properly so that we have uh, good speech. Now, when we're swallowing, and think about it, just swallow your saliva for a second. What's happening to your tongue? When I just swallowed my saliva, my tongue moved, to the, moved up and back. And that's what's going to happen. Your tongue will touch the roof of your mouth. 
And so if you're swallowing a food, so food bolus, bolus basically means like a clump of food, what's going to happen is the food is going to go to the back of your mouth or the back of your tongue. The muscles of the soft palate will raise. So remember, this is your soft palate over here. This muscle will raise. Okay. And then the pharynx will become wide. Remember how we said there are muscles that dilate the pharynx, that make the pharynx bigger? So if this is your pharynx over here, there are muscles that will open up this uh, passage over here. And when it opens it up, we have constrictor muscles. Remember we looked at like the superior um, constrictor muscles. There's a muscle here that squeezes the food down and then it goes to the middle a constrictor muscle that will squeeze the food further down and then the inferior constrictor muscle that will push the food further down. So there are muscles that constrict the food down. And then, this is something you may remember from anatomy class, is that we have something called the epiglottis. Okay? epiglottis. And so as the food is going down, we want it to go down the esophagus and into the digestive tract. We don't want the food to go down to our uh, voice box or to the lar larynx. So this epiglottis, it seals it so that the food can go down the right way. Okay? We don't want the food to go into our uh, laryngeal opening. So the epiglottis is the thing that seals it, that seals the voice box, that seals the larynx so that our food can go down the right way. And as the food is going down, what we say is there is peristaltic contractions or the food is getting squeezed down via peristaltic contractions and then the digestive system takes over. So let's see if we remember the um, the muscles that we looked at. So this muscle, let's look at A. This muscle over here is right here. And if you remember, do you remember what this point is at the back of our head? Um, there's a bone that's called the styloid process. So this is the styloid process. And so this muscle, think about it, what muscle is it? It starts at the styloid bone and ends with the pharynx. So that's the stylopharyngeal muscle. This muscle over here, B, is the, so remember it's on top, so if it's on top, it's the superior pharyngeal constrictor muscle, okay? So superior constrictor. This is your middle constrictor, and this is your inferior constrictor muscle. So just know the um, basic muscles that we looked at today for your test. So here again is just a list of what exactly happens when you are um, swallowing food. So when, when we say food is masticated, masticated means chewing. So this is the, the sequence that happens. So when, food, when you chew your food and then you swallow it down, these are the steps that we looked at. There is a video that I do encourage you to watch that will help um, explain this better. And actually, he, you can see over here, he has three cups. And these three cups, what he's, looking, he's trying to explain is that the top one is the superior constrictor muscle. And we have the middle constrictor muscle, and then we have the inferior constrictor muscle. So you'll notice, you'll see in the video how he tries to demonstrate that.